Hmm, I wonder what's trending now in keyboard world. A screened in keyboard? Hey, I'm Squint. Recently, the LED screen in the keyboard has been a hot trend, but there are well over $400 to $700 for the good ones. As a keyboard enthusiast, I wasn't sure if I needed one and wanted to spend that much money for something that is only for maybe a gimmick. Then I found the one that I didn't mind paying for. I have never heard of this keyboard brand, but you know what? I'm here to take out the risk so that I can let you know. Speaking of risk, you know what is not a risk? Subscribing to my channel and hitting that like button. A custom mechanical keyboard hobby is pretty hard to get into. If you want to get a good mechanical keyboard, it's going to cost you well over two to three hundred dollars. But there are also really good budget options out there. And I believe I have a pretty good budget keyboard in this video. It's a hot swappable mechanical keyboard at the starting price of $35. It's called Long2 LT84. This keyboard's price starts around $35 US dollars for a wired version and around $50 US dollars for the wireless tri-mode version. This is already a really inexpensive keyboard, but it's got a knob, LCD screen, and even the Bluetooth. To give you a general idea of how inexpensive that is, a good regular Cherry MX style switches are somewhere in between 40 to 60 cents. And just multiply that by how many keys you guys have in your keyboard. For in this case, we have 84 keys in this keyboard, and just a simple math, you would have to spend somewhere around 40 to 50 dollars for this one to fill it up. And to think that they included the Bluetooth, the keyboard housing, the keycap, PCB, and the screen for this keyboard. This is a really inexpensive priced keyboard. Is it worth the price though? Well, we'll just have to stick around and find out. Alright, so this is the box for the Long 2 mechanical keyboard. And uh, there really isn't much to it in the, in the box. Ah. So here's our keyboard. Looks like the owner's manual. Uh, it comes in Chinese and English only. And uh, looks like they included the keycap puller and the switch puller. Uh, hot swappable, by the way, this keyboard. Looks like it comes with the USB C type. Now, this is a wireless version, which I paid about $50 somewhat. And uh, wow, design actually doesn't look that cheap. I'm surprised. The fit and finish is pretty good. There's somewhat of a wobble there. But yeah, it looks like a pretty good mechanical keyboard just right out of the box. Um, look at this, guys. We've got LED diffuser on the side. And we also have four feet, four rubber feet here, which is pretty good. Ooh. Wait a second. This is a. This has a little dongle housing here. Clever design, but it's, it's hard to pull it out. So this keyboard is actually a tri mode, so you can have a Bluetooth. Uh, 2.4 gigahertz wireless like this. So it looks like the keycaps are actually ABS. Let's just pull this one out and take a look. Actually, it feels pretty sturdy though. Um, overall, the quality of the ABS keycaps, they are not bad. They're mostly used for the budget brands. Um, unless you do use double shot ABS, which could be really good. Uh, but over time, the ABS tends to become a little shiny when you rub it off. That's why a lot of people prefer the PBT, but they're also more expensive, that's why you can find the ABS budget keycaps in the budget keyboards. I guess one thing about this keycaps is that I don't know what type of a profile they are. Also, usually the bottom rows have like a comeback type of a profile, but this one actually has a little bit more volume coming outwards. So another thing you can consider to buy this keyboard is the knob dial here. So the even though this may not be like super duper important feature of the keyboard um, but it can come in really handy you don't have to go into the windows uh, windows volume control setting and um, you can just control the volume with this keyboard right here and uh, also the screen right here it, you may be able to control the screen with the knob um, I guess the only way to figure out is just to turn it on and see and uh, it's on? Yeah, it is on. Oh wow, look at that. Oh, look at that, guys. It shows you the battery capacity and the time. And, uh, yeah. But it's all in Chinese. I'm guessing that's the bright... Oh, gosh. Um, 
Oh, okay, I somehow went. I, uh, I do not have any clue how to read Chinese, and uh, this is not good. Um, how do I? Is there like a setting some? Oh, look at that. Awesome. Wait. What is that? Is that a stickman? <laughs> it's, it's playing a stickman on this keyboard. What? Wait, hold on. Let me turn off the light. We may be able to see it better. Ah, uh, that is so cute. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so... Not only this is an RGB, it's a full RGB by the way. It's not just the backlight, but also comes with the GIF reader. That's awesome. So let's talk about the screen a little bit, a little, uh, little more. Um, it looks like we got window here, the dongle, and the lock button. I don't know what that lock button is, but when you're going to the connect, oh wow, this is where you. Okay, Bluetooth 1, so it offers up to Bluetooth 3, so you can actually get it up to Bluetooth 3. And that is, I believe that's the Wi-Fi, or the wireless dongle. Let's go ahead and just grab that and plug it into my computer real quick. Linking, 2.4G linking. Success, okay. So that's it. So with this knob right here, you can actually change between the Mac and the window. Wait a second. So this is a default. What is this? Oh yeah. That's awesome. A lot of different <laughs> RGB types going on here. Um, you can definitely find one of your favorite and just... Oh wow, yeah. You can change the different colors. And that's a full RGB here. The brightness of the RGB is actually not super duper bright. Um, I think with it being such a low price, it, it makes sense that they didn't include such a good RGB in here. But as far as, uh, as, far as I can tell, the refresh rate of this RGB is actually pretty good. Um, there's no flickering or anything. Only thing disappointing is going to be that side diffuser. It's, I don't think it's actually diffusing it that well. Okay, so... I guess here is a one downside to this knob. I guess you you would have to go through this whole menu to actually get to the actual volume knob section. Overall, I mean, how impressive is this keyboard? This is so cool. I guess only one thing I have complained about this knob is that sometimes it does not recognize control. Um, it also feels pretty cheap. It feels really, really plasticky. Uh, it doesn't have that good of a click here. Another good example of a knob dangle is going to be this TM680. Even though this only has a functionality for the volume control, you can say that this, this has little teeth here to kind of catch, catch onto your fingers. This one right here, on the other hand, it's very slippery. This keyboard actually comes with the software too. I, I quite frankly, this is all in Chinese. Um, I don't even know what all that means. Oh, that this looks like a RGB changer, maybe. Oh, wait, this is the GIF stuff. Wow. So you can maybe put in put the GIF in there and be able to customize your keyboard. That I have no clue what that is. I don't know what that is, and uh, what is this? Oh my God. Wait. This is so cool. What the? It also looks like you can change into like a different pattern just depending on your music. I just don't understand because it's, this is all in Chinese. It, there's a setting. Oh. <gasps> oh my gosh, there's an English. <laughs> and wow, this, I'm gonna have to try this one out right here. Okay, so I just downloaded that right there, and uh, okay, so I found out how you just go into the import right here, and select the key, select the GIF, and then you press upload to computer or keyboard, and it's now loading. <laughs> that is so cool. 
So the screen doesn't really have a brightness control here, um, but the fact that you can actually put your favorite GIF in here, that's actually pretty awesome. So I guess the loading speed is actually depending on the size of the file. Um, I tried to do with one of the more high quality GIF, but it actually wouldn't take it. Is that a scratch in the LCD? There's some I was already a scratch in the LCD. I have absolutely no clue how. All right, so let's actually move into the switch. On the seller's website, they didn't really specify what kind of a switch is this had. Uh, but let's take a look. It felt like linear. And it is indeed a linear. I have absolutely no clue what brand this is. It says Long2, so it may be one of their, just their own switches then um no no switch information whatsoever on this one but it's actually a pretty decent switch it's it doesn't feel scratchy at all it, i mean yes it is a pretty cheap plastic switch here they probably doesn't even cost a 10 cents per switch um but yeah decent enough it's actually pretty good so now it is a hot swappable switch so i've just got a drops holypen.x with me. In this keyboard, you can actually take all the switches out and use one of your favorite switches and just basically plug this thing in and you should be all good to go. Now, only thing is that you have to be really, really careful. If you wanna go back to your original switch that came, from, came with this keyboard, there's no extra switches that came with the keyboard, so just be careful if you're going to be switching the keyboards around and uh, you're going to be using the original switch again. Just don't bend the legs. I did get my hands on wired. Um, only difference between the wire and wireless is this screen right here. Um, so this is actually seven segment um, LCD screen here. It doesn't actually offer the GIF support or any kind of a keyboard software-ish. Um, you can also see refresh rate of this uh, RGB is just slightly worse than the wireless one. All right, so what do I think? Is it worth the money and the risk? I think you can try one for yourself and maybe toy it around. Is it gonna be my daily driver? Uh, probably not. I do love the fact that I can play my GIF file in this keyboard, but uh, I've got many other keyboards that are just better for this to be a main driver. But you know what? This is a really great keyboard to kind of experience around and also to toy it around. If you guys want me to modify this keyboard, please let me know down in the comment section below. I really want to see your reactions. I guess the one main problem I had with this keyboard was the volume knob. It's kind of useless since you have to go over many multiple different menus to get to the volume control. I think it would have been nice if they made the volume knob as a main control and maybe press in the volume knob to get into a different menus. I just couple dots here and there. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button, and I'll see you guys next time.